In this module, we're going to cover the concept of case space uh, and go into a little more detail on how to understand case space. So, as we discussed in a previous module, if I have some function g of xy, um, then the 2D Fourier transform, say capital G of kx, ky, we talk about that um, as existing in Fourier space or k space. And so this would be uh, essentially on the right hand side here is essentially the Fourier transform of the image that's shown on the left hand side. And what we want to do in this module is get a better understanding of uh, how to think about k-space, how to navigate through k-space, and, and understand um, the components of k-space. So it's useful to start off by thinking about, so in here we have sort of k-space, kx, ky, and if we consider some point in k-space, uh, kx, ky, then this will be at some angle theta equal to arc tangent of ky, kx, um, with respect to the kx axis. And this will also, we can think of this as a, being a vector that has a magnitude of uh, absolute value of k equals square root of kx squared plus ky squared, which is just simply the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Um, and then in a previous module, we looked at um, sort of functions of the form cosine 2 pi kxx plus kyy. And we said that um, the the period in the x direction is simply given by 1 over kx, and the period in the <clears throat> y direction is simply given by uh, 1 over k sub y. And if you look at this angle of theta that this um, the normal to the um, the wave makes, um, so they, these are sort of these it represents sort of the, the peaks of the cosine waveform. Then if we think about this normal vector to the wavefront, this angle of theta here. Uh, is equal to this angle theta, which is simply given by this expression theta equals arctan ky kx, because we can sort of we know that this theta is simply the arctangent of one over kx over one over ky equals arctangent of ky kx. Okay. So what that means is if we have some, if we're thinking about some point in k space, then we know that um, it's going to represent a wave that has wave fronts that are actually perpendicular to that vector. So for example, since this theta and this theta are exactly the same, we know that for any k vector that we draw in k space, it's going to have represent a wave front correspond to a, a, a component that has wave fronts that are perpendicular to that vector. Okay, so that's one thing. The next thing we did is previous modules we said that this spacing, this period, is equal to 1 over square root of kx squared plus ky squared, and that's simply equal to 1 over this magnitude of k that we defined up here. All right, and so this also tells us something interesting, which is basically the farther we get out into k space, then the smaller this spacing gets. And so uh, that means that if I think about <clears throat> moving along this vector here, if I go out far in k space, then I'm really talking about something that has a much smaller spacing. Okay, And so essentially, where we are in k space tells us two things. One, it tells us uh, sort of this diagonal component, what angle it's going to be at. And also, the farther we get out in k space, it corresponds to this smaller spacing which makes sense because it's a higher spatial frequency. Okay, So we can sort of think about this, sort of summarize what we've figured out, which is that basically if I'm in K, X, K, Y space, and let's say I'm going along the, um, the KX axis, then because theta heat equals zero, all the, the cosine, sort of the, the, the cosine modulated wavefront I'm thinking about will have wavefronts that look like that. For low values of kx, and then as I go farther out into kx, it's representing uh, higher frequencies. Similarly, along the ky axis, all the variation is going to be perpendicular to this, and then as I go farther out, it's finer frequencies. And similarly, if I go off diagonal, anywhere I go off a diagonal, then the wave fronts are perpendicular to that 
vector, and as I go farther out, they will be finer spacing. All right. So that's a simple way to think about, it. given any place in k-space, you can always think about drawing the vector going to that place in k-space, and that will tell you the direction of, of the wave fronts. So let's, this is an example here where, for example, this place in k-space, we're along the kx axis, and so it's going to have um, variations only in the x direction, and so that represents uh, a wave front looking like that. As I go farther out into the k space, you notice that the spacing becomes finer along the kx axis. If I'm on the ky axis, then this would correspond to something that has only variation on the along the y axis. And um, as I go farther out, the spacing becomes finer. If I go off diagonal here, so this is off diagonal, this would correspond to something that oops, varies with both x and y. All right. So we can think of basically every point in our Fourier space represents how much of the um, the original image is similar to this has a variation in, in, in either uh, a certain both orientation and also uh, spatial frequency. So let's look at some more examples to, to sort of understand this a little better. So here what I'm doing is we're taking um, components of different spatial frequencies. So here we have very low spatial frequency in the x direction, a very low spatial frequency in the y direction. And then I'm here I'm adding a sort of higher spatial frequency in the x direction. Now I'm trying to add some diagonal components. And you notice that as we add up all these components, what's shown in the second row is sort of the summation of the, uh, um, the images that I get. So if I add these two components, I get this. If I add this on, I get that. If I keep adding on components, then you sort of notice that um, I'm adding more and more detail. And in particular, as I add these very high spatial frequency components here, I'm starting to fill in some of the detail in my image until finally, if I add enough components in, I end up with an image uh, as follows. Uh, in this movie, we're going to take a look at that. So we're going to start off with, we only have energy at the center of k-space, and that corresponds to the very low frequencies. And so you see that the image itself is very low frequency. As I play this movie, we're going to start adding more and more data out at these higher frequencies, and you'll notice that uh, we fill in the detail. So here we go playing the movie. So once again, we're going to play once again and just focus on this ex sort of expansion of data. And we add, so we add more and more data in this, in this plane. If you sort of look on the right side, you'll see we're getting more and more high frequency details. OK, so let's go for some examples to try to um, reemphasize some of these points. So here we have the object or image, uh, our uh, image, and then here we have its Fourier transform. Now in this example, what I've done is I've just zeroed out all the data here. Okay, so this is along, we're talking about ky, kx axis here. So the information, really, if you think about the components that are missing now, these are components that are going like that, all right? So would I, if I zero these out, I should have lost a lot of the detail about all the left-right um, variations. And so if I look at, for example, um, this edge here, okay, the edges of the corpus callosum, you notice that all these edges going left to right are a bit fuzzier. Okay, so like this edge here, this edge here. Okay, and that's because I've lost the detail of left-right variations because those parts in K space are no longer there. In this example here, I, I, I've zeroed out these areas here. And so remember, that's along the ky axis. And so I've really lost uh, detail about variations that go up and down. And so you notice, for example, this edge is now much um, rougher. So all these sort of up, these, these edges of variations going up and down are, are basically lost. All right. Here I've zeroed out all the high frequency data. And so you notice in this image, we've lost the detail both in the x 
and the y directions, and in fact in any direction we've lost the detail components. Uh, in this example, I've done something different here. I've actually zeroed out this part of the data, okay? which means uh, I'm only keeping information really primarily in these areas, which are primarily the, the left-right variations in my data. Okay? And so if you notice this, I've kept these edges here, okay, but I've really lost this edge up here. Okay, so I've lost sort of this, this where I should have seen variations like this, I've really lost that, and I've only kept information that variations are that are going like that. Similarly here, I've kept this data, so I should keep information about variations like this, and I really have lost the information about variations like that. And so you notice here, I've kept the sort of information of th these variations, but really lost the information of variations going left to right. Here I've kept all sort of the information about the edges, and so you see both these variations and these types of variations are sort of kept preserved in my image. Uh, this is a slightly different example where we're actually adding on some information into case space. So I've taken my original case space data and just plunked some, some uh, energy down into this area of case space. Now remember, since this is along the ky axis, I'm actually interjecting energy, a component that looks has variations like that, and you see that this is a, the original image with variations in this direction superimposed. Here I've um, added energy down here in case space, and recalling from uh, earlier in this module, this should correspond to a component that has a variation that's normal to that vector, and indeed what we see is sort of the added component is sort of uh, in that diagonal direction.